some of you may be familiar with markup languages or the XML extensible markup language, uh, which is used by uh, Epidoc. But uh, in any case, this is uh, uh, an introduction for those who are not familiar with the topic and for those who want to uh, to remind themselves about about uh, about it so let me see if i can yes markup languages and artificial and computer languages as a whole including programming languages which are I have to say, much less human readable and much uh, more complex, and we will not be dealing with them uh, uh, for the time being. Uh, but uh, if we want to uh, make a larger definition of what a language is, and to include all the markup languages and artificial languages and the call lines, etc., etc., that uh, uh, we have created, uh, we can say that this is any symbolic system that conveys information between two sides, an addresser and addressee, which consists of three things, symbols, operators, and rules. For example, uh, even the language of basic uh, arithmetics has its uh, uh, symbols, which can be uh, the uh, uh, prime numbers. Operators, such as uh, signs uh, like uh, plus, minus, equals to, and rules. Uh, for their combination. The uh, natural languages also have uh, symbols, operators, uh, and uh, uh, rules. And uh, uh, as you know, the, in the uh, flexible languages, the flexional languages, such as uh, Greek and Latin, with uh, which you are uh, uh, familiar, uh, the, uh, the structure is uh, very clearly uh, visible. Uh, and Market languages are also something that uh, consists of uh, these symbols, operators, and rules. And uh, this week you will learn how to, uh, you will learn the basic grammar of one such language, uh, the extensible markup language or uh, XML. Uh, basically, what uh, markup does, this is annotation. Annotation and markup can be uh, treated as uh, synonyms. Uh, annotation is uh, uh, the thing that you are doing even without any uh, digital tools and uh, uh, without any computers before you. Uh, when you take a piece of uh, paper and you uh, highlight uh, things from uh, the text, make uh, marginal notes, etc., etc., this is also a form of markup. In the realm of digital technology, uh, there's the HTML language, which is hypertext markup language, which is uh, basically what uh, anybody of you have uh, already uh, seen and uh, is using, uh, because this is the, uh, the, the language uh, on which uh, almost all the uh, online content, all the web pages uh, in uh, uh, the internet uh, are composed. If you open a, a web page and there is a function in uh, uh, each browser uh, which uh, uh, reads uh, uh, view source code, and if you open this uh, source code, uh, you will see uh, the core of the content of any web page is uh, 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 information uh, enclosed by uh, uh, angular brackets and uh, containing uh, text. Uh, links to other text, uh, multimedia, images, etc., etc., and this is uh, uh, basically what uh, uh, each uh, web page consists of. Uh, the HTML markup language basically and uh, mostly uh, use, uses visual markup. Uh, the annotation of elements in the text, the meta text to the text, which gives uh, the browser directions about how to visualize stuff. Uh, how a, a, a title or a subtitle uh, should be visualized, how a text should be intended on a, uh, on a web page, uh, 
um, what should be uh, uh, highlighted as uh, uh, bold or italic or underlined, etc., etc. Uh, kind of visual markup also uh, lives in uh, your uh, mm, word processors, uh, but uh, it is uh, uh, mostly uh, invisible. You you, uh, you don't see it uh, operating, but uh, uh, there is also some kind of uh, visual markup which uh, uh, a text document such as uh, a Microsoft Word document uh, contains. Uh, marking up things in your text uh, can be structural. Uh, the basic uh, uh, example of a structural markup is uh, something that uh, all of you are all also familiar with, or pretty familiar with. This is the um, organization of uh, uh, bibliographical references. You have usually in uh, each and every bibliographical reference uh, things such as uh, author or authors, uh, year of publication, title, uh, and uh, um, if it's uh, uh, an article in, an, uh, in, a, in a journal or uh, in a, a collection, uh, a title of the article and the title of the journal, uh, issue number, pages, etc., etc., you know uh, very well what a bibliographical reference uh, is made of. And uh, you know that uh, it can be visualized in different formats, but almost all of them contain the same basic uh, elements. Uh, so all this can be marked up uh, as uh, to, uh, to, to indicate uh, which part of the information refers to the authors of the paper, which part of the information refers to the title of the paper, to the year, etc., etc. And then it can be uh, processed so as to give different visual outputs. You know very well that uh, uh, the, 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 the formats of uh, uh, bibliographical reference can be uh, different. And uh, this is uh, a good example of what basically what uh, uh, the structural markup of uh, XML does when uh, uh, processed by XSLT in uh, other ways that uh, we will see this week. And there's also the semantic markup. You want to highlight things in your text to indicate uh, uh, what they are. For example, this is a word. This is a personal name. This is a geographical name. Uh, this is, uh, um, for example, an, uh, uh, an official. Uh, an official of the Roman Empire. Or uh, a provincial governor. Or uh, a local citizen. Uh, uh, or uh, this is a profession, or an ethnicon, or uh, things like that. Uh, this uh, can be uh, also done by marking up a document, by annotating a document, and this kind of markup, uh, uh, this side of marking up a document, can be uh, called uh, a semantic markup. The extended markup language, it is called extended, uh, because uh, apart from visualization, uh, it does uh, a lot of other things. Uh, it uh, actually is uh, more structural and semantic than uh, visual. Uh, mostly what uh, you encode, this is the structure of the document and different data and metadata in the document uh, that uh, mm, confer additional semantic information than the uh, text of the uh, monument uh, that you are de uh, dealing with. And it is stored, as uh, uh, Dragana said in uh, her previous presentation, it is stored in a, a very simple uh, and uh, um, very uh, flexible and uh, um, very small as, uh, uh, um, uh, <clears throat> as concerning uh, its uh, uh, size, the size of the file, uh, a textual file, basically, that can then be transformed in different ways into different outputs. And the different semantic stuff or structural stuff that you have uh, encoded in your document, uh, they can be uh, um, uh, visualized differently, be it on a web page. So XML is transformed into HTML uh, to produce uh, uh, web content. Or also it can be uh, transformed into uh, other document formats, such as PDF, Microsoft Word, ODT, 
latte or uh, whatever you whatever you wish. Uh, mostly uh, XML uh, databases uh, are uh, used uh, to produce uh, uh, websites and uh, this is uh, what uh, most of the uh, epigraphic uh, uh, projects using the epidoc uh, are doing and uh, this is uh, what uh, we will learn uh, to do uh, this week. By the end of the week you will have uh, front-end visualization tools into which uh, you will uh, put your inscriptions and uh, hopefully you will see the output uh, in uh, uh, an internet browser. Be it uh, uh, locally uh, run, you will uh, have an application that uh, uh, will uh, start a local server or uh, you can do it uh, on the online platform that uh, we will provide. Uh, the, the other good thing about uh, creating uh, collections of multiple uh, uh, XML files is that all the information which is uh, contained in them can then be indexed. So you can produce tables of contents, indices, search, uh, produce searches, uh, create filters, to uh, uh, show only certain types of documents that contain certain information, etc., etc. Um, so uh, not only it is uh, uh, cheaper and more accessible to produce uh, uh, digital um, epigraphic corpora as compared to uh, the printed ones, but uh, it is also much more uh, interactive. Uh, the users of uh, such corpora can uh, jump from uh, filter to filter, from inscription to inscription, from different uh, things mentioned in different inscriptions without having to deal with the uh, bulky volumes of a uh, uh, collection such as uh, CIL or uh, uh, something of the sort. Uh, so basically, what is markup? and uh, uh, XML as part of the markup, it is text annotated by another text. So uh, the opening and the closing tag, which surrounds a certain piece of text, a certain string of text, um, the opening tag and the closing tag have the same name, which usually indicates some metatextual data which describe the content surrounded by the uh, opening and the closing tag and the closing tag has uh, uh, has a slash at the end. Uh, tags can contain other tags which are embedded into them. As you can see uh, in the second bullet in this presentation, uh, usually in uh, the uh, XML editors uh, with one of which uh, we'll be working this week, um, for the sake of convenience, the uh, embedded elements, the daughter elements, uh, as they are called, uh, are presented on a new line and uh, with uh, a slight uh, indentation, indentation uh, to uh, the right, uh, so that so that they can be uh, more easily uh, seen. A unit of opening and closing tag together with the uh, mm, content that is uh, uh, enclosed by them is usually called an element. Uh, as we said, elements can contain other elements and the uh, sub-elements can contain yet other sub-elements embedded in them. And this can be presented as a tree-like hierarchical structure uh, in which all the elements that contain other elements uh, uh, can be uh, presented uh, as a tree, but uh, they are also embedded into each other. So the main element from which all the other uh, sort of spring in a tree-like form is also the uh, element which encompasses all the other elements. The opening tag of this main element, which is called the root element. This is the root of the tree. Uh, the opening tag stands in the front of the document and the closing tag stands, stands at the end of the document. And everything that uh, uh, there is in a, uh, in a markup document is contained within this root element. So you see here a, a hierarchical structure of an HTML document, of which 
the root element is HTML. So an HTML document starts with an opening tag, which reads HTML and ends with the, the last line of uh, such a document is uh, the closing tag of uh, uh, slash HTML and everything uh, uh, which is uh, in between is embedded into this root element. Uh, so this already gives uh, quite a uh, rich and uh, flexible structure by which you can describe things in your document. Uh, but uh, in addition to that, in an element, uh, always in the opening tag of the uh, element, you can have also different attributes, one or more attributes. And in these attributes, which are followed by the equal sign, you have enclosed in uh, enclosed in quotation marks uh, you have values for example here you see a description a textual description of a, a height of an uh, epigraphic monument and uh, you see the encoding you have the opening element uh, opening tag of the element height and you have the closing tag of the element height with a uh, slash uh, at the beginning of it. And uh, in the opening tag, you also have the unit of measurement and the quantity, which gives the possibility to then index all the, um, all the monuments or to filter all the monuments in your, uh, in your collection by height. Uh, and to uh, be able to search them by uh, by height uh, with some uh, exact quantification, regardless of how are they actually described in our document. Uh, you can have a text which reads half a meter in height. Uh, you can have a text which uh, reads uh, 0 0.5 meters in height, etc., etc. If you have encoded all of these in the same way, uh, you will then have uh, a common uh, index uh, which uh, indicates all the monuments uh, which have the same height, uh, um, regardless of the way uh, this is described in the text. But uh, for this, you must have uh, elements through, throughout your collection together with their uh, attributes and values, which are basically the same. This is why to control uh, the uh, content of uh, each and every XML uh, file that you have and to ensure that they are structured in the same way, uh, all the elements and uh, attributes and uh, admissible values are described in a document which rules, so to say, uh, all the uh, um, XML content in your, uh, uh, in your file. And uh, usually it uh, stands uh, at the beginning of, uh, of the file. This uh, document used to be called uh, DTD or document type definition, uh, a document which describes what uh, is admissible and what is not in an XML file and according to which uh, an XML file uh, is uh, structured. Uh, now the uh, respective format is called a schema or an RNG schema and its uh, syntax is uh, slightly different than uh, a DTD, but uh, it, does, it does the same job. If you link an XML document to a schema, uh, it uh, checks the validity of this uh, uh, document and we will see now how it works. But first, as we said, uh, usually an element contains an opening tag, closing tag, and something in between, usually a text. There are some elements that don't contain anything and they don't have to contain anything. For example, the element for line, line beginning, which simply marks the beginning of a new line in the document in our epigraphic monument, for example. Uh, and uh, nothing needs to stay between the opening and the closing tag of the uh, line beginning element. Uh, this is why uh, it uh, usually uh, you don't use an opening and a closing tag with nothing in between them. You use only one tag, which has the, uh, the name of the element, 
and the slash after it. These such elements, which uh, usually mark uh, boundaries in uh, the structures of our texts uh, and uh, things like that, are called empty elements. And uh, a typical empty element which we'll be using a lot is the line beginning element. Line break or line beginning, but line beginning is uh, a slightly uh, better uh, description of uh, what this uh, element does. As we said several times already, uh, an element can contain daughter elements or sub-elements, which should be entirely uh, embedded into uh, uh, the element which stands higher in the hierarchy. Uh, here you see how a well-formed markup should look. You start the first element, you start a second sub-element in it, then you first close the second element, and then you close the first element. If you open an element head to a document, and within head you open title, first uh, what, uh, you write whatever you want to write, and first you need to close the second element you have opened, the title element, and after that you need to close the head element, uh, which is one of the... Uh, crucial principles of well-formed markup. Uh, you don't, which uh, uh, usually is the uh, intuition of uh, people who have worked with, uh, uh, predominantly with analog text, uh, you don't uh, open element one, open element two, then close element one, and then close element two, because uh, this will uh, lead to the intermingling of uh, elements and your document, uh, your XML document uh, uh, won't be able to be processed. Uh, by uh, mm, XSLT or whatever you're uh, using. Uh, so the markup needs to be well-formed, and we'll talk more about this uh, uh, in a while. But well-formed XML is already not the whole picture. Uh, the XML also needs to be valid against the schema. Well-formedness and uh, validity are two separate things. Here you see a snapshot of uh, uh, an older version uh, that uh, the one we'll be using of uh, uh, Oxygen XML editor. Um, you see here a, a document and you see at the beginning of the document, uh, um, usually this is highlighted in purple, uh, a declaration which states that uh, this is an XML document, a version of the XML, and the encoding that uh, is uh, used. Uh, we will uh, use the Unicode, of course, uh, which is uh, UTF-8, but uh, this comes automatically at the beginning of uh, all the documents that uh, we'll work with. And uh, mm, then uh, you see uh, mm, XML code which is not well formed because on line 7, the encoder forgot to uh, to close the opening tag of the uh, element uh, with the uh, uh, with the pointy bracket, and so the good thing about uh, uh, the good thing about uh, 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 XML editors such as uh, Oxygen uh, is that uh, usually the um, mistakes that uh, you have uh, committed uh, are highlighted in uh, red. And you can go to the respective place in the document and see what's going on and correct uh, uh, the mistake. Uh, usually, it is uh, uh, usually the uh, the software describes uh, what uh, mistakes the mistake consists in. But you can have a perfectly well formed uh, uh, document which is still not valid according to the schema uh, which you have assigned to it, which also will show here in the opening uh, of one, two, three uh, lines of uh, each and uh, uh, every document. Uh, an element uh, might not be in the uh, exact uh, place uh, in the uh, structure of the file. Um, and a value of an attribute uh, might not be permitted or something uh, like, uh, uh, like this. So uh, when we uh, do the encoding, we will take care for our documents to be both well-formed and valid against 
the EPIDOC compliant uh, schema that uh, we will uh, use. Uh, uh, my colleague Dragan and Nikolic also, I, I don't know what is wrong with this slide, uh, uh, sorry, but uh, we will uh, correct this when we uh, link to it uh, in the program. Uh, already told you about uh, text encoding initiative, uh, which uh, produces uh, uh, schemas uh, which can be used for uh, all the humanities uh, data uh, that can be encoded, and the uh, EPIDOC schema, which is a subset of, uh, of TEI. And there's also, to this day, uh, there are also subsets of EPIDOC, for example, uh, uh, CGDOC, which is used to uh, describe and publish uh, online Byzantine lead seals. So EPIDOC can be used, uh, uh, apart from inscriptions, also for uh, papyri and other text-bearing objects for which uh, we now have CGDOC.